We've all been there. We've all done at some point in our lives, probably, <laughs> if you haven't, you're lucky, but probably done too much pushing, too many bicep curls, too much bench press, too many 100 day or 1000 day push up challenges, and we haven't done enough rowing and horizontal pushing, and that's affecting our position on our shoulder posture. Yeah, that combined with our daily lifestyle of sitting down too much, computers, phones, all this stuff which reinforces poor posture, we've got to start taking some, some action in the gym, in our training to rectify it, and it might just be that this is the one thing that's going to keep your shoulders healthy and moving well. All right, before we get into this, we need a quick anatomy lesson. So we're going to talk about shoulder blade position, this scapula. This guy sits in here, I'm just going to trace a corner down in here. Now the scap's job is to help shoulder movement to facilitate it by keeping contact with the humerus head. This is the humerus in our upper arm. So this bone at the head here, we've sits into a small dish on the scapula called the fossa. And as the shoulder comes up, the scapula is going to rotate around the side. You can see it there moving. And all it's doing is trying to keep the dish on the scapula in contact with the head of the humerus. Now the problem comes with the shoulders is if this scapula stops sliding and gliding properly so that therefore it doesn't keep in contact, that's one issue. We need plenty of strength to pull the shoulder back into place. So our retraction here, mid-load traps, our rhomboids do a load of good work to try and keep that shoulder back. You can see how that's going to create a nice bit of symmetry. That's what the shoulder's all about, creating balance. If we've got too much overload in the front, so our, pe our pecs, you can see straight away there, Dave's lats is jumping, the pecs are too tight, it rounds the shoulders in, all this stuff gets long, and now all of a sudden we've got an issue around balance and the shoulder is gonna start to cause um, or experience some impingement and discomfort and some general unpleasantness. So our job from horizontal pulling, if we're doing more rowing type work, we're working more of this retraction type work, and not to confuse that with vertical pulling. If Dave goes into a pull-up position, we're gonna use this vertical pulling pattern, it's gonna get a load of lats involved. When lat gets short and it gets at end range, again, it wants to round the shoulder forwards. So when we talk about pulling, we're not talking pull-ups, we're talking about rows, and there's some exercises which we're gonna show you which are really gonna to help to keep that symmetry and balance around the shoulder. So we're gonna show you three exercises to work on some of your horizontal rowing. The first being our staple bodyweight row, but we're just gonna go through some specifics in here. You can do this on the rings or the bar. We like the rings because you can change quite easily the angle that your body is on to make it harder down there or easier further up the top so Tim gets into a position where he's comfortable we want to be able to do a decent number of reps in here 10 12 reps or so so that we can actually build up our capacity with these muscles at the back that Tim was talking about to give us that better uh, posture of the shoulder so first thing is when he's hanging dead loose in this position the shoulder is miles forward looking see whether the shoulder is miles forward of where his ear is what he's got to do is set these scapula without losing his body control from his trunk so not arching his back to give himself that false sense of retraction actually squeezing those shoulder waist back imagine you're squeezing a pound coin between your shoulder waist and that now sets the shoulder look where it is in compared to his shoulder uh, compared to his ear sorry so then from that position what he's got to do is clamp these shoulder blades down keep them nice and hot, snug to the uh to the rib cage and then drive the elbow back hold this position at the top so actually squeezing that retraction at the back and then slowly control back down and what's important in this position is he gets back to that bottom and he's still set when he's learning he can drop out of that position and then pull back in just so you get used to setting that shoulder back and where that actually is and how that actually feels but eventually what he wants to be able to do is get to the bottom be able to maintain that retraction and go back up so he's actually keeping those uh, rhomboids mid lower traps holding that scapula back in, a, in, a, in an isometric contraction whilst he is then getting that rowing action um, from the arms. The real key point of that guys is you're going to feel like you want to slack out at the bottom here just keeping the tension throughout I'm just going to really emphasize that control of the scapula and the other thing like Jacko talked about was making sure when you're pulling through that you're not going to allow that shoulder to jump forwards it's all about keeping that shoulder in the socket pulling yourself through and isolating those muscles which is going to help to create that balance and symmetry second exercise is a reverse fly now this is one of my absolute favorites because it gets the target a bit more around the posterior delta which is often lacking on different people fair point if you've never trained it it ain't gonna grow <laughs> yeah. 
we talk a lot about mid-load traps and rhomboids and their rotator cuff, but a lot of people don't talk enough about the posterior delt. Massive function of stabilizing the shoulder and helping to keep it healthy because it creates lots of uh, strength in that posterior chain to keep that shoulder girdle stable. Yeah, something that I've needed to work on because wasn't doing enough of it in my previous life, pre-calisthenics. Yeah. And if you're into aesthetics, having a bit of junk at the back is not a bad thing. Junk in the trunk. So Dave's just going to cross these rings over just so if you're using them on a bar, it stops them from sliding around a little bit. Now this is a really interesting one. It's very much like a lateral raise in terms of the technique point I want to focus on that you see people doing dumbbells. They pull it up and then all of a sudden the tension goes and the weight just falls back down. They never actually control the lower. And we need to apply that same principle into the reverse fly. So Jack goes through the same process, sets the scaps in. Now the job is to keep those guys super tight in the socket as he pulls up, which is generally the easier part. So he's pulling up into a nice T position. He's squeezing tight on the back there. Now this bit, when he comes back down, he really has to work hard to keep that retraction. It's so easy, it shows a bad one, Jacko. So he comes up and then he's gonna allow himself just to slump all the way down. So come back up, set yourself, he comes up. It's this bit where he comes through of really working hard to keep those shoulder blades together. That's gonna create a load of strength adaptation on the back of the shoulder, keeping everything nice and stable. And again, no compensation through the midsection. Isolating the shoulder, don't get, um, don't get into, stuck into the trap of trying to make this really difficult because you're just gonna find a compensation. So train at a level that is appropriate for where you're at, build it up, great little superset off the back of some of your other pushing work to keep that shoulder healthy. So if you've got to the point where you're horizontal pulling, where you've done loads of rows, loads of flies, and you're thinking, where do I go next? Well, remember you've got some options within both of those exercises, particularly the body weight horizontal rows to lift the feet up. You can put a weight vest on to make it a bit more difficult. But if you want to make it a bit more exciting, we've got another option for you as well. So Tim's going to go on the rings, but he's going to have his feet completely off the floor altogether. So he's going to be suspended, but staying in this horizontal position, keeping it tucked for now, having to keep that set, that shoulder position where now a little bit harder because you're completely suspended off the floor and then driving up, keeping that same thing, a pause at the top, that retraction at the, at, when you are in that top position, trying to keep that shoulder back as much as possible and then control back down. It's gonna add a heap load more uh, strength into the posterior part of that shoulder, into everything that's good at the back that's gonna help you to hold a better postural position for your shoulder, give better balance to your shoulder, give you some sort of maximal strength almost type training for it um, to offset all of the other type of um, dips or push-ups that you might be doing. And then it's also gonna give you um, some great foundation work if you want to progress towards any sort of front lever position. So it's a great reason to progress towards these tuck horizontal reps. So hopefully there's some tips in there guys, some nice little coaching points which are going to mean you get the most out of those exercises. You might have seen a bodyweight row and a reverse fly before, but it's really the execution of how you're going to go and deliver those which is going to make sure that shoulder has the best opportunity to stay healthy and functioning how you need it to. Yeah, as Tim said, you might have seen those exercises before and you might have been told that actually um, you need to work on your shoulder posture or hear a lot about shoulder posture, you're wondering is yours good enough? and uh, you probably didn't know the context as to why those exercises were so important. So hopefully that's given you that. And one of the biggest things to take home from it is if the shoulder is in a more stable position, when Tim was talking about where it sat on the, shoulder, on the rib cage to start with that shoulder blade, if he's in a more stable position, he's gonna be able to produce more force. He's gonna be in a better position, less injury worries to, to, to think about and have to deal with. Um, and that's gonna help you progress because if we can keep away from all those shoulder niggles, your progression is gonna go through the roof. Yeah, horizontal pulling is is something which doesn't drip in and out of my program it's always there it's always a staple part every single week i have a decent amount of horizontal pulling in for most people if you're coming from a place where your shoulder posture isn't that good and you struggle with range of movement shoulder niggles i'd be suggesting that you try and put double the amount of horizontal pulling in that you have pushing so if you're doing one exercise of pushing i'll be putting two exercises in of horizontal pulling don't need to go crazy but the idea being that that horizontal um, row position is going to help the shoulder posture that you're going to find yourself in most of the time during the day and on top of whatever training history you might have done. So just think about how you're going to stretch your program to take care of those shoulders and prevention is always better than cure. Exactly. So until next week, class dismissed.